Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to find the equilibrium stellar structures. First topic is the stellar structure equations. I'm going to show the basic equation to find the stellar structures. Second topic is the polytropic models. And the third topic is the Chandra Sekar mass. Fourth topic is the Eddington luminosities. Final topic is a standard model. First of all, I'd like to show you the equations, basic equations to describe the stellar structures. Star maintains the hydrostatic and thermal equilibrium, changing the compositions very slowly. Basic equation is a hydrostatic equation. This is the pressure gradient is equal to the gravity. This is hydrostatic. Continuity is a mass conservation. The third one is the radiative transport. So this is a temperature gradient is determined by the flux. And the fourth equation is a thermal equilibrium. Gradient of the flux is dependent on the Q. Q is a generation of energies by the nuclear fusions. And the pressure is related to the density and temperatures following the, this equation. We can deal with the classical particles as the ions and the electrons. So mu sub i is a mean molecular weight due to the ions and the electrons. Sometimes the density is increasing. Degeneracy pressures by the electron becomes the dominant. The last terms correspond to the pressure due to photons due to light. And the kappa appears in the radiative transfer equations. This kappa is opacity. Opacity is a function of density and temperatures. And the energy generation rate by the nuclear fusion, Q, is a function of the density and temperatures. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven equations. So this shows the seven equations. And how many unknowns we have? So you can count the numbers P, rho, M, T, temperatures, opacity, kappa, flux, F, and energy generation of Q. So we have seven unknowns. So number of the equation and the number of unknown variables is the same. So we could solve these equations. So the equation is described with uh, differential equations. The differential equation is a uh, first order differential equation. Round P, round R, round M, round R, round T, round R, round F, round R. So we need a boundary conditions to solve the this differential equation. First di order differential equation, so we need four boundary conditions. So next topic is the boundary condition are required to solve the differential equation. First order differential equation. So four boundary condition is required because we have a four first order differential equations. So first one is at m equals zero. So this means at mass equals zero. If you consider the center of the stars, the mass is zero. So if you, if you consider this radi radius of the R, so inside of the, this radius, mass is gonna be M. So at M equals zero means we consider the, just a center, central point. At a such a point, radius is zero, of course. Flux Actually, there is no materials inside of, at the position of the R equals zero. So there is no flux. F should be zero. At the M equal capital M, this corresponds to the total mass. And the radius should be the capital R. Then the pressures become zero at the surface of a stars, pressure becomes zero. And the flux corresponds to the luminosity of the whole stars. This is L is a luminosity. 
So we have a four boundary conditions. And we could solve the, this differential equations. Seven equations and the four differential equations. Seven unknowns. So we expect to solve the, this system of equations. But it's quite difficult to solve because of the, these three reasons. First reason is a highly nonlinear equations. For example, kappa is a function of rho and t. So a or b is not equal to the zero. So it's quite difficult to solve the nonlinear equations. And also coupled equation means f appears here and there. The really coupled equations, it's quite difficult to solve the, these equations simultaneously. And the last one is uh, two-point boundary conditions. Boundary conditions are given at the different point. If you draw the M is a mass and F is a flux, each point of the position or inside of the stars, flux is given. But the boundary condition is just given at the two point. At the total mass of the M, flux becomes the luminosity. So boundary condition is given at this stars point, blue stars point. Then we would like to connect these two boundary conditions. We have to choose the slope of the initial point. Only the initial point are given. The trial slope we could consider. Then it's going, going, moving, moving. Unfortunately, it cannot satisfy the boundary condition at the M equal capital M. Sometimes you could choose uh, this slope. Unfortunately, it could not satisfy the boundary condition at the M equal capital M. If you choose a uh, slope, this one, then it might come to the this. So then we could say that this is the solution. Right? So, but as I explained, we tried several slopes, actually iterations. Are required to obtain the solution. You need uh, some computer times to find the solutions. So iteration are required. This is a third reason. I show the basic equations for the stellar structure, and also I show the reasons why the basic equation is quite difficult to solve. From the next section, we are going to simplify the equations to find the stellar structures. Okay, this is the end of the this session.